How does the Straits Times decide on which stories to cover? And what measures are taken to ensure that its reports are fair and balanced? These were some of the questions raised at the annual Straits Times Forum Writers' Dialogue, a platform for the newspaper to engage its readers and gather feedback on its news coverage. Especially towards the election times, there's a great uh, weightage of news that goes leaning towards the ruling party. I mean, what we want to know, I think it's really blindingly obvious to everyone that this is like, uh, there's something there, that there's a mechanism turned on towards this, this kind of weightage. Are you under any pressure? I mean, <laughs> frankly speaking, I mean, be, be on the level with us. We're all part of the same national conversation. Uh, the short answer is yes. <laughs> but I mean, to be very honest, um, elections are a time when everybody has heightened consciousness, right? Both the readers, the political players, everybody has their guards up. So I think we come under intense scrutiny. Um, where you know, Zoraida, Alan, myself, where we, where we come from is we're trying to sort of cover all the developments and give it as full and fair coverage as we can. I think in the last by-election, we sort of bent over backwards to make sure that we had you know, e almost equal play each day um, for the two parties. So sometimes I would, you know, harangue my colleagues saying, how come there's so little happening from this party today? And they said, oh, nothing's happening there. They're, they're not doing any walkabouts today. And I'd say, no, we must go find a story. Otherwise, people will assume that we're covering something up. So we will look for stories, even though they may not have been doing very much on the ground that particular day. Um, so it almost came down to like having one page on the opposition, one page on the ruling party. Although, strictly speaking, you shouldn't have it so formulated. So I think what we want to do is try to basically be even-handed. And I keep telling my colleagues, we are not political players. We don't want to be caught in the crossfire. Basically, what we would like to do is give you both sides of the story and you judge. You're the voters, right? And our role is to get the message from both sides across. That said, it is true that we have a very active uh, hyperactive government, right? It's a very active newsmaker. It has a view on almost everything that affects your lives and mine. And it's, it's out there. It's putting its view across. And I think rightly so. Uh, I would have a problem if the government wasn't communicating with the people and not explaining and, and, and trying to win the argument um, for why it's doing the things it's doing. So when you have an activist government which is going out and putting out information on a whole range of topics and policies, our role is to give you the facts on what they're doing and then we will interpret it. You can respond to it. You can write the letters to it. The first job is to let you know what they are doing. Then you can respond. If you don't even know what the policy is or what the rationale for doing it, then how do we engage? So that, I think, is our, our first criteria. What's the news? Can we get that to you as, in as full and fair a, uh, a version as we can? And really, I don't think we do any party, the ruling party, a favour if we skew it too much in their favour. I think people will get turned off and we may be doing them a disservice if we did that too much. So I don't think we want to do that. Sometimes you may say we, we don't always get it right. But on the whole, what we are trying to do, given the political makeup of this place, is get the information to you in as full and fair a version as possible, and then you decide. Straits Times editor Warren Fernandez was speaking to some 200 people at the newspaper's annual gathering of forum letter writers, held at the Singapore Press Holdings News Centre Auditorium on Wednesday. When asked if letters that support the opposition or are overly critical of the ruling party have a lesser chance of being published, from editor Yap Kun Hong explained that what goes into the newspaper is determined by the level of public interest. For instance, last year was the general elections. That's how we choose our letters. The criteria is based on what's important to the average reader. Is it based on quantity? Yes. Partly. Is it based on quality? Yes. Is it based on whether it will affect the ruling party or whether it will affect, uh, not affect the ruling party? I wouldn't say so. Because if you were to go by the general election last year, for instance, we had a record number of almost 30,000 letters, never before. And one reason is that one in six letters we received was about the general elections. General election and the presidential election. Now, it was very interesting because this is 
2020 vision, we found out that of the letters the Straits Times published in the forum page, about 59% in quantity and in terms of what was published was, broadly speaking, pro-PAP, okay, pro-ruling party. The rest was pro-opposition or pro-alternative government. Interestingly enough, when the figures came out for the voting patterns in, in Singapore, 60% of the electorate voted for the PAP, 40% voted for the opposition. Now, this wasn't a guess. This was what we received. So if you're saying, you know, how do we decide on whether letters are, whether we censor ourselves, I would say, you know, I, our criteria would be to judge a letter on its own merit. If it's overly critical, there's no harm in it. Is it rational? Does it make sense? Does it advance the, uh, the discussion on whether Singapore needs a two-party system, for instance? That, those, those are the points that we would consider. But is it rude? If it's rude, if it's personal, then, we, then I wouldn't consider that at all. Watch our other clip for Warren Fernandez's explanation on the Straits Times coverage of the online vice ring case and sex for contracts case involving former Central Narcotics Bureau Chief Ng Bungye.